Welcome to this short video on how to de-stress your cat's life. In this video, we're going to concentrate on the environment and how we can improve it for our cats. The first thing we need to think about is what does a cat need? What are its key resources? And that is so important because if a cat hasn't got easy access to its key resources, it is going to be stressed. We've already talked about when stress occurs, particularly multi-cat households, um, and when there's competition. So we've got to make sure we've got enough of these key resources. So the resources, food, water, latrine, so either indoor litter boxes or outdoor places that, that they can go out there. You see a lot more stress in cats that are true house cats because they don't have a chance to get away from everything. Resting places, preferably high up. Cats like to be up high when they're feeling stressed so they can kind of look down on the world and, and feel that they're more protected. And then ultimately they need either places to hide where they will be completely safe, where no one's going to put their little hands in and pull the cats out, or they need a true exit or entry route. And then whether they want companionship or not is very much up to the cat. Is this a cat that likes to be social or not? And so they're the key resources. And you need to have all of those resources for each group of cats. Now, when I say a group of cats, a group of cats are cats that will sleep together, they will groom each other, they will rub noses. They are a group of cats. So if we look at this picture here, the, the two cats on either side are my two cats. The cat in the middle is the big cat's cousin. And this is at his house. And they switch houses quite a lot when we go on holiday. And you can see that while these cats all have their own food bowl, the food bowls are far too close together. This is very threatening. And you can see from the body language, this is three unhappy cats. And that's despite the fact that my two cats eat side by side, groom each other, sleep together when they're in my home. So in my home, they're a group, a single group of two cats. But when you put them into somewhere strange, they become each cat is its own group. So if we have another little look at this scenario, so the, the cats on the side, the, the cats on either side are my cats, and the big grey one is, it's his house they're in. And you can see my little blind Bengal is not at all pleased about Jerry being that close to her. She's giving him a good hiss. Um, and so this is despite the fact that my two cats are a group at home. So here, there are three cats in this house, that is three groups, that means you need resources for all three cats. And that's all the resources. Unlike the other panel with the oriental cats, these are clearly one group. These cats groom each other, they eat together, sleep together, they use the litter box together. This is one group of cats. And for those, you can actually have one set of resources. They would actually rather share. So it's about having enough resources. We used to talk about having um, a litter box per cat and one extra. You don't need that if they get on well. But if they don't get on well, then that is what you're going to be looking at. So if we focus on that and then start thinking about other ways that we can de-stress these cats. So first and foremost, it is reducing overcrowding. Cats are solitary hunters. We've talked about this before. This is why they're not that great at being social. And so you have to look at how many cats you've got. And if you're having behavioral problems, it's usually you've got at least one too many and you need to seriously think about reducing the number of cats in that environment. So it's so important to reduce overcrowding. Other things, particularly if the house cats, you need environmental enrichment because a bored cat or a cat which isn't stimulate, stimulated gently by the environment is more likely to develop behavioural problems. So that means lots of cuddles, lots of play, um, feeding food in a feeding ball so that they can pat it around. Um, actually playing with fishing rod toys, that sort of thing. Engaging the cats, getting them to behave like cats. It's a very important thing to do. But it's important that the management of the cats stays stable. You don't want lots of daily changes. You don't want to feed them at different times a day. You don't want to put the litter boxes in different places. You want to keep things um, fairly stable, but have playtimes, etc. added in. 
Other things that can help reduce anxiety, well, we know Feel Away is a great way of doing this. So if you have a lot of cats that do become stressed and anxious, then plugging feeling, Feel Aways in is a very good way to, to reduce some of the problems. But remember, it cannot work on its own. You've got to do all the environmental things as well. That is so important. And don't forget, it's not just the cats in the household. It can be the ones outside. So if you've got um, a litter box, for example, in a conservatory, and the cat's got to go into that conservatory to use the litter box, but there's a low wall outside where cats outside can see in, that cat's not going to want to use that litter box. So cats looking in from outside can be very threatening, and that's an important thing to, to remember. Or if other cats outside tend to um, hijack and jump on top of a cat when it's leaving the cat flap, then that could be very threatening. So you might want to put pot plants around the cat flap so that the cat can get out um, and feel protected. So there's all sorts of things you can do. And there's lots of really good books on behavior that I, I, I really ask you to go and have a little, little more hunt around. And remember, cats just deal with the world in a different way. Weather is important. Certainly we see a lot more stress-related problems uh, directly after bad weather. If it's been raining, if it's snowy, cats don't want to go outside. They're holding on to their pee. They're stressed, all cooped up in the house, and that can make things a lot worse. And owner stress is really important. We find when owners are very stressed and they've got a bonded cat, the cat is going to pick up on that stress straight away and the cat's then going to develop stress-related behaviour as well. So that's a very, very important thing to address. So it's trying to work out what it is about this individual cat that is so stressed and correct that for them. And I think it's worth putting urination stress as a separate one. I mentioned the cat where the litter box is in the conservatory because it was being seen from outside. But urination and defecation are incredibly stressful times for cats. They're very, very vulnerable. And if you're living with a cat that doesn't get on with you, it's a classic time for being um, uh, hijacked. So they'll jump on top of you while you're trying to use the litter box. Very, very unfair thing to do. So make sure there are enough litter boxes. Cats don't like using a litter box that's been used by somebody outside their group. So if that box has already got somebody else's pee or somebody else's poo in it, they won't want to use it. So the boxes need to be clean. There need to be enough of them. They need to be positioned appropriately. That doesn't mean in busy thoroughfares. That doesn't mean where the dog is seeing what they're producing and then eating it. You know, they don't want to be where the children are um, annoying them when they're using the box. It needs to be safe, quiet, secluded. Um, how clean the box is is very important, I've already mentioned, but also what type of litter is in the box. Some cats have preference for different things. And also whether the box is covered, because actually some cats prefer to have a covered litter box, but others actually feel even more vulnerable because coming out of a litter box which is covered, a cat who's a bully can sit on the top and then swipe at you when you're coming out of the box, and that can be very, very stressful. So it's about trying to think like a cat and as a cat, what would you like if that was the perfect litter box place? And try and correct that for them. So I hope some of those suggestions will help you to de-stress um, your cat's lives. But the number of cats you have is the single most important thing. Because cats don't queue, cats don't like crowds. So if you can reduce that, you've got the best chance of reducing their stress. So thank you. <laughs>